Section 4.3 is the complex zeros of polynomial functions. A polynomial of degree n has exactly n roots or zeros. Some or all of them might be rational zeros like we talked about in section 4.2, but some or all of them might be either complex numbers or they might be square roots. We have a conjugate root theorem which says for any a plus bi, so complex number, then that's a root if and only if its complex conjugate is also a root, so a minus bi. Same with square roots. If a plus root b is a root, then a minus root b must also be a root. That's why in the quadratic function you have that plus or minus option. So this first one gives us a couple zeros and wants us to find the cubic equation that represents it with integral or integer coefficients. So they give us two zeros, but how many zeros does a cubic function have to have? Cubic is degree 3, so that means we have to have three zeros. So they give us 2 and they give us 3 minus i. What's the other zero have to be? Well, complex conjugate roots theorem says if 3 minus i is a root, then 3 plus i also has to be a root. So they are actually giving us all three zeros. So if you remember back to 4.2, we said if something is a zero, then x minus that number is also a factor. So that means that you can write this in factored form. So this 2 becomes x minus 2. This 3 minus i becomes x minus the quantity 3 minus i. Make sure you put parentheses around it. And this 3 plus i becomes x minus the quantity, parentheses, 3 plus i. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to multiply all this out, foil all this out, to become the integer standard form coefficients that we want. I always start with the complex part because those i's will end up canceling each other off. So here I just distributed this negative n, got x minus 3 plus i and x minus 3 minus i. And then I'm just going to start foiling. I'm just going to ignore the x, plus, x minus 2 to start with. Just leave that out in front. And then I'm going to foil this first, these next two terms. Even though there are three parts, it's the same thing. Just every term has to go to every term. So for this first one, I multiplied x by every number in the second parentheses. So x times x is x squared x times negative 3 is negative 3x, and x times negative i is negative ix. So go ahead and pause the video and finish foiling these out. So here it is all foiled out. Just a reminder, i squared is negative 1 because i is the square root of negative 1. If you need a little review of complex numbers, I suggest watching the video linked above, section 8.7 review. That goes into complex numbers and i. So here it is all foiled out. So what you should notice is everything that has an i in it cancels. You have a negative ix and you have a positive ix. You have a positive 3i and you have a negative 3i. The negative i squared becomes a positive 1 because it's negative times a negative 1. So then you can simplify this. And it simplifies down to x squared minus 6x plus 10. So now your last step is to go ahead and foil this binomial by this trinomial and finish up with your cubic function. So go ahead and pause the video and finish foiling this function out. So once everything is foiled out, the cubic function that has these two zeros plus that conjugate is x cubed minus 8x squared plus 22x minus 20. So whenever it gives you known zeros and it tells you what kind of function it is, you just want to set up the different factors and then FOIL everything out. So now we're given a quartic function, degree 4, and one root, negative 1 plus 2i, and we want to solve. Solve means find all its possible roots. If it's a degree 4, how many roots is it going to have? Degree 4, that means it has to have exactly four roots, whether they're complex or real or a combination of the two. We know negative 1 plus 2i is a root, which means what also has to be a root? Negative 1 minus 2i, its conjugate also has to be a root. So now we know we have two out of the four roots. The way that we're going to solve this is we're going to actually use polynomial division. We're going to find the quadratic function that will give us these two roots and then do some polynomial division to find the other two roots. So we know these two have to be a factor just like the previous example because they're zeros and we're going to find the quadratic that is made out of these two and then divide that into our original function to find the other two roots. So what I want you to do is pause the video and foil all this out to find the quadratic function that gives you these roots. 
So if you FOIL all this out, you end up with x squared plus 2x plus 5. Don't forget on this one you're going to get a negative 2i times a positive 2i, which gives you negative 4i squared. i squared is negative 1, so you end up with a plus 4. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to divide the original function by this new function. This will give us another quadratic that we can then find the last two zeros. What you'll notice is I have to do polynomial division because this is not a linear, it's a quadratic, so you can't use synthetic. I also have placeholders. This jumped from an x to the fourth to just a regular x, so I have placeholders for my x cubed and my x squared. So what I want you to do is pause the video and do this polynomial division, and you'll end up with another quadratic function. So when you do your polynomial division, you end up with x squared minus 2x minus 1. And because we knew this was a factor of the original polynomial, you end up with a remainder of 0, which is good. The original polynomial, this quartic polynomial, can actually be written as these two quadratic polynomials multiplied by each other. The opposite of division is multiplication. We know the two zeros that came from this original one, that's the negative 1 plus or minus 2i. So now we want to find the two zeros, because it's quadratic, the two zeros that come from this second factor. So this doesn't factor, so what you're going to have to do is quadratic formula. So go ahead and pause the video and find the two zeros that come out of x squared minus 2x minus 1. So quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I plugged in everything. You end up with 2 plus or minus root 8 over 2. Root 8 is 2 root 2. Be very careful when you're simplifying this. You have to take the 2 out of every single thing. You factor it out and then cancel, so you end up with 1 plus or minus root 2. So your four zeros are negative 1 plus or minus 2i. There's two of them there, a complex conjugate pair. And then 1 plus or minus root 2, a radical conjugate pair. On this one, we're going to do a very similar thing, but it's actually a little bit easier because this one is just 3i. It's not like an a plus bi. You can use synthetic division in a much easier way. So just like if I said a 0 was 3, you can use synthetic division and plug it in. You can do the same thing with this 3i. So you set up your synthetic division. I didn't have any holes up here, so I don't have any zeros down here. Your 3i goes in the box because it tells you that zero, you pull down that three. And then you just do synthetic division just like you would if this was a three. So let's try it. We have this 3i times three, so we end up with a 9i. So now we need to add these. We can't actually combine five and 9i because they're not like terms. So we just write it as five plus 9i. So now when we multiply by 3i, 3i times five is 15i. 3i times 9i ends up being 27i squared, which is negative 27. So go ahead and pause the video and finish out this synthetic division. So if you continued out, you should have ended up with adding these together. You get 15i minus 2, then multiply by a 3i again. This becomes negative 45 minus 6i. Make sure you're always changing that sign because of the i squared. Add those together. The 45s go away. You just get negative 6i. Multiply that by 3i. You get positive 18. And then those go away, and you get 0, which you should because we knew this was a 0. Now kind of wondering what do we do from here? Well, we know 3i is a 0. If 3i is a 0, what also has to be a 0? Well, negative 3i also has to be a 0. It's complex conjugate pair. So we can continue our synthetic division now with negative 3i. So we have these new coefficients here, and negative 3i goes in the box, and we just repeat our synthetic division. So you pull down your 3 and continue on with this new polynomial. So go ahead and pause the video and do this synthetic division. So again, we end up with a 0 at the end, which we know we should because we knew negative 3i was a 0. And what you'll also should notice is every single time your i's went away. So now what we're left with, is we were left with just 3x squared plus 5x minus 2, which is a quadratic. We're down to a quadratic. We talked about this in 4.2. Once you're down to a quadratic, just solve it like a quadratic. So go ahead and pause the video, pick your favorite way to solve a quadratic, and find your last two zeros. So I factored this. It factors into 3x minus 1 times x plus 2. So the original 0 you're given and its pair, 
is plus and minus 3i, so there's two of your zeros, you need two more, and you get one-third and negative two. So this one had two complex conjugate solutions and two rational real solutions. This one I wanted to do because of the importance of this term. So this is the sum or difference of cubes. You need to be able to factor sum and difference of cubes. So if you have a perfect cube plus or minus a perfect cube, one is a perfect cubed, one cubed is one. So when you're doing that, when you're factoring it, whatever has been cubed, the linear terms, they go in this first one. And then the first linear term squared plus the two linear terms multiplied together and then the last linear term squared. So squared together squared, and then the signs, we shorten it with soap. Same sign, opposite sign, always positive. Since this is a minus, this is a minus, this is a plus, this is a plus. So given that, go ahead and pause the video and factor x cubed minus one. So you should have factored this into x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. This quadratic, trinomial quadratic on this back part, will never ever factor. So now you can have find the three zeros from this. This part doesn't factor, so you have to find the zeros in another way. So go ahead and pause the video and solve this. So this first one should have been pretty easy. x minus 1, you just get an x equals 1. This part, I did quadratic formula. So you end up with a negative one plus or minus the square root of negative three over two. So I pulled out that i. Make sure you still have the square root over the three. You just pulled out the square root of negative one. So you end up with negative one plus or minus i root three over two. Make sure you know how to factor sum and differences of cubes. This will show up a lot and it will make your life a whole lot easier both in this class and in calculus. Make sure you know how to do this.